Awesome, we got our slides up. Yay, okay, Let's so roll. we're for real now. Welcome to Pro Productive and Profitable, your best billing practices with your best billing team, Elaine and I. Look at that. Yeah. Today, we are gonna be taking you guys oh. on a journey. We'll go back. And like all good journeys worth taking, it will involve a treasure map. That's all I'm gonna tell you at this point. That's it, we're your guides. But who is your best billing team? Well, the slides will move. <laughs> and we're your best billing team. <laughs> so my name's Elaine Wind. I'm the product manager for the invoicing team here at Clio. And I've been at Clio for just over two years. I started out in support and I moved into technical escalations. So if you had a question about Clio or maybe a particularly puzzling issue, you might have spoken with me on the phone. Fun fact about myself, in a past life, way before I joined Clio, I used to be an andrologist. So for those who don't know, that's a male reproductive specialist. I worked in a fertility clinic because uh, of a background in biology. So there's not a lot of conversations that make me uncomfortable. So <laughs> if you have any questions, feedback about billing, come find me in the lab after. I'd be happy to talk with you. Yeah, <laughs> she's open to that. <laughs> okay. And my name is Karina Sebulak. I'm a customer success manager here at Clio. So it's my mandate to advocate for my clients internally, to prioritize their needs, and to ensure they're successful with Clio. And before that, I was an onboarding trainer, so I got to work with clients in their first 120 days with Clio and make sure that they knew what the heck they were doing before <laughs> they engaged on this journey. And fun fact about me, on the side, I am a stand-up comedian, does not pay well, that's why I'm here. Now, it could be that I'm not funny enough. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld seems to make quite a bit of money. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, you guys get me for the next, what, 45 minutes? Yeah, no joke, though. This is a serious conversation. Yeah, yeah. if you laugh, it's, it wasn't planned. It was, it's coincidental. Okay, so our journey, what are we doing? You'll notice that we're starting on a ship together right now. We're all on a ship. I know it looks like a pirate ship, but I assure you this is all legal and above board. Don't worry. Then we're going to hop off onto this island and get into this castle, which is our little rallying point. And it's sort of like, what do you need on this journey into billing? W what can we prepare you with? And Elaine's going to go through that, um, what we assume you have together before we embark on this journey called billing. <laughs> and then we're going to head up the island like... There we go. Yep, go on, sorry. Slides. <laughs> to generate bills, everybody's favorite time of the month. I know, right? And <laughs> there's, there's a couple different ways we could go with generating bills, and we're going to try to help you avoid pitfalls and make that time of the month easier. My God, what is happening? <laughs> okay, and then, <laughs> then we're going to carry on, thank goodness, <laughs> to <laughs> reviews and approval. Because we assume that a pair of eyes does need to take a look at the, those bills after we've generated them. Let's see, maybe there's edits, I don't know, maybe there's corrections to be made. So we'll see if we can get through that smoothly. And then we're going to head across to apparently a volcano where we're going to manage those bills. Lots of fun stuff to talk about there, guys. We have a ton of stuff to cover. And then, boom, you're done, you're at the treasure chest. Okay, we're not actually leading you to a treasure chest that's full of gold. Okay, that's the getting paid talk that's after this. We're just trying to get you guys to the chest so that people can fill it with loads of money. So that's what's happening here in this talk. So let's get started. Let's talk about pre-billing setup. What happens before you begin? First and foremost, this presentation should be for everyone. So even if you haven't gone through the billing process yet, we have made it so that you should be able to follow along with every step that we go through. And if you're an experienced billing person who's done this many times before, we have added a few things in there so that your next billing cycle will be a little bit easier. Um, that being said, almost everything we're talking about today was going to be behind billing permissions. So if you don't have those, might be a little unfamiliar. If you, if you need them, your firm administrator should be able to turn it on for you. And at the start of our journey, the map looks like, uh, as we stated, is your bill or your account should be fully set up before you begin. So that means you have your bill themes created, you have any payment profile set up and attached the contacts. Payment profiles, by the way, are how you set up interest and early payment discounts if you're interested in that. Um, and you've created all your contacts and all your matters and your uh, billing profiles are set up on your matters because you've created all your time entries and expenses and everything just needs to go onto the bill. And that's where we're starting our journey today. What we will not be talking about today is trust management, bill themes, bookkeeping, 
non-billable time are people wanting to leave right now <laughs> I, I don't see anyone walking out on this fact and we're also not going to talk about Clio payments however they do have a talk about that right after this one yeah same room you don't even have to move exactly stay sitting for an hour and a half yeah we got Steve and Cher coming in uh, Steve is the product manager for the payments team He's very familiar with Clio payments uh, if you want to like maybe move we can go upstairs there's anatomy of a bill theme by Tara she's a team lead for our customer success team so she's very familiar with bill themes and then later today, we have Manager Accounts and Finance with Clio with James, who's a member of our payments team and Amrit, a member of our finance team at Clio. And tomorrow, we uh, will cover non-billable time with a presentation by Madison and Sarah, who are both members of the team who created non-billable time and other time tracking. So you guys could just spend all of ClioCon talking about billing. And yep. we'll, t we'll talk to you at After Dark if you want. Yeah, come find us at After Dark. Let's talk billing. Okay, generate bills. It's that time of the month to generate bills. Uh, it's the first, right? So I'm gonna do my bills, but it's actually not the first. It is, I'm late. I'm late doing my billing and we're gonna say it's like November 4th because I stayed in San Diego a little bit too long. Wait a minute, that's, that's not a realistic scenario, right? Like who here has ever billed late before? Oh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> I'm so, we can't all be perfect. Okay, it's happened. I, I ran my own business for years and I was often late, which is maybe why I'm no longer running my own business, but whatever. So <laughs> part of the issue with that is that I want to make billing easy, so I want to bulk bill my clients. However, if it's now November 4th, I want to make sure I'm not billing them for any entries or expenses from November 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So what I have been doing is the following. Now, I, I will stipulate you guys don't try to learn this because I'm gonna show you a better way, but I'm just gonna show you one possibility. So can we switch, thank you. So what we're doing, this, this modal is coming up. The screen is green, it's a bit overwhelming. Let's just forget the screen, we'll just click generate bills. We'll create all the bills. Yeah, so essentially, just to wrap it up for you guys who couldn't follow in the, <laughs> is I just went to billable clients, select it all, and I'm generating all the bills. And then we're gonna flip it back to a little video that we made where essentially I'm having to go through bill by bill in those pre-bills, open them up, look for any time entries or expenses that were entered in November and delete them. So yeah, we'll go through, we'll we actually through have that. slides uh, that will show you on what she was doing in the past. So if you generate these entries, not filter for anything, create all the bills, and then we would have bills on the slides, yeah, that look like this. So we got all the entries on them, but there's a bunch of entries at the bottom from November. And if you remember, we're late on billing, so that makes sense. There's time entries created in November from the attorneys, but we don't want them on the bill. And so in order to get rid of them, we need to edit it. And then we need to scroll down to the bottom, because that's where they would be. And then we need to remove all those line items. and Click remove every single time, which is, tedious and time consuming and not what we want to do. So let's go through a better way. Yeah, I mean, the, the good news is you can do that. It's just that I, I want to save myself time. I don't want to be here for 15 hours dealing with billing. So we're going to go back to our yellow screen, green screen, and I'm going to show you guys a better way. So um, just let's get acquainted with the billable clients page. What are billable clients? So essentially, there are any clients that you have that have unbilled time or expenses. And the way that this page is laid out is it starts with the client up at the top. So I know it's tough to see, but Albatross is the client name. And down below would be listed any matters that they have that have unbilled time or expenses. So Albatross, Bombac Camera, for example, they, they all have one matter each. And then over on the right-hand side, it will show me if there's unbilled hours. It'll tell me how many unbilled hours they have and what that amount due is. And the way that it lists it out is client is up at the top. So if the client had multiple matters, it would show me the total amount due for that client. Whereas on the line where it's got their matter, it's just showing me the amount due for that matter. And I know I said we weren't really gonna delve into trust accounting, but just to show you here what this is, Albatross has $5,000, and you know what, I'll try to zoom in so that you guys can see that a little bit better, but they have $5,000 at the client level. So what that means is that we could use that amount in trust towards any of their matters. 
whereas Bombat Kemmer doesn't have any at the client level, but they have $4,000 to use towards this one specific matter, which isn't gonna help them much because they've got over $48,000 due. We're doing really well, hey? And our- Which low key flex on uh, how much our, our law firm is bringing in right now. Our, fir our firm's <laughs> doing great as far as Bombat Camera is concerned. And look at Carter Stair has over 77,000. Okay, good. But remember that I want to, I'm billing late, so I wanna make sure that this list is legitimate just for October 1st till whatever that last day in October is. Some, I knew someone was gonna shout it out. 31. He's got it, he's got it. Okay, so handy little tip here is that filter is what I'm gonna leverage and you can use filter on almost every page in Clio. Every page? Pretty much. Does that include the activities page? Yes. Does that include the contacts page? Yes. What about the matters page? Absolutely. So it's gonna look something like this? And how about the bills page? Yes, and actually, I think the only thing I'm doing in this entire talk is using filters. So <laughs> that's gonna be my thing. So I'm gonna hit filter. Oh, we gotta wait till we're back on, there we go. And I'm going to filter for that activities date range October 1st until, there we go, October 31st. This is great, except there's one more stipulation here is we don't bill all of our clients monthly. Some of them we bill by contract, so once that contract's complete, we bill them, and some we do quarterly. Does anyone know how I would filter to make sure that I'm only billing for monthly clients? Practice area, good guess. Yes. Custom fields. Yes. What custom are custom fields? fields? So custom fields are fields that you set up, so administrator initially would set those up in settings, and they're fields that you put in at the contact or matter level to capture information that Clio does not by default capture. So for instance, when you're creating a new matter, we would capture things like obviously who the client is, we would have related contacts, um, practice area, but we wouldn't have information such as billing cadence or date of injury if you're personal injury. So that's something that you would wanna create a custom field for. And then you can actually filter for those. So keep in mind that originally an administrator has to set them up and you do have to have boutique or elite subscription to access custom fields. So once I've got them in there, I can filter and in this case I'm using one called billing cadence and I'm going to select, we've got monthly by contract or quarterly and I'm going to select monthly. I and want. Sorry, before go we go for the filters, there's actually something that uh, you can do for the activities date range for if maybe someone else did billing last month or they missed a few time entries or expenses, you can remove the former date entry so that it says nothing in there. And what that does is it pulls all time entries and expenses before October 31st. So that means if you had missed any time in May, you get to capture that on your bill so that you capture all time entries and expenses. But if you don't want May time on an October bill, you can put a hard limit on that, which yeah. is what we're gonna do. And by the way, in billable clients, to get to collapse that filter, you just click on filter again. All right, so now we have our filtered list that are monthly billable clients only for October. And we'll see Albatross is gone. Bombat Kemmer, now they only owe over 35,000. So apparently we've done a crap ton of work already we, in November. We, we did $12,000 <laughs> worth of work on November 1st, yeah. 2nd, and 3rd. Two of the days are on a weekend. Good job, team. We've been busy. We've been busy. So now I can select all and hit generate. And so this is the modo that uh, we went over before. The, it's kind of busy. We skipped it. There are some like technical issues. There still are, I guess. But uh, we're going to go over it. And in the next five minutes, you and I are going to talk about it. You'll become very familiar with it. So when you come back to generate bills, you'll know exactly what you need to touch and what information does what. So let's just start off with the issue date right away. It's always gonna default to today's date, and the due date is uh, calculated by the grace period in the payment profile that you set up for your contact. Um, if it takes a few days to review the bills and take it from draft to awaiting payment, don't worry. If the dates are not aligned when you approve it, then it gives you the option to update that date later on. 
Um, and let's go down to the detail levels at the bottom. So it gives you a little bit of control on what you show on your bill right here. So all details uh, will give you a whole list of all your, all your line items. So you'll be able to see every single one. Um, and we do have slides for it, but I'm not going to make the AV team go back and forth because it's kind of crazy. So, oh, just kidding. AV team stepping up. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what it looks like. Um, you'll have every single line item. And then for the next uh, option, it will be activity summary. And that combines all uh, time entries and all expenses with the same activity category or expense category with the same rate into one line item. So this is great if you want to give it to maybe opposing counsel. You need to give them some detail, but you don't want to give them everything. Or you have five phone calls in a month, and you don't want that to be five line items. You can make it a little bit more concise. You can also choose to aggregate your items, everything into one, which just gives you one line item. And you can also split it up to services and expenses, or aggregate only uh, um, services into one line item, show every single expense that you paid out of pocket for, or the other way around, all your hard work lined out, and then expenses in just one item. And we'll go back to live demo. Awesome. So those are the options that we have here in detail level. And then the bill theme, we would just choose a default one, but we have in here Spanish for because we work with immigration law and we have some clients that aren't very familiar with English. Um, in bill themes, you can change pretty much everything to another language if you want. If you're interested in that, we do have a bill themes presentation immediately following this. Uh, but we chose default. And then on the other side, uh, I want to quickly call out that if you have, say, five matters for a given contact and you don't want to generate five individual invoices and send out five emails to this client, you can combine it into one, and you just have all five invoice uh, matters on one invoice with a total at the bottom. And I just want to point out two things for applying tax and applying secondary tax. Um, this is where you can add that. You can set how much the tax is in your settings. Uh, but we got some feedback that when you apply tax, you don't always want to apply it to all your line items because there are some expenses that you already pay tax on or that you just can't apply tax to, like court filing fees. And so we are actually going to be working on a feature regarding this in our slides um, called expense category tax. So you'll be able to create an expense category, and within that expense category, you can designate the amount of tax you choose. And this will override the tax that you have in the bill generation modal. So even if you say apply both primary and secondary tax, if this expense category says no tax, and you have this expense category attached an expense, no tax will be applied. So you get a little bit more finite control over your taxes. And this is being done actually by our international team. Um, but if you're interested in signing up for an early access on this, uh, you can do that by going into the application and uh, going into our presentation. There'll be a link in there, a document that you can view with a link to all early access that we'll be talking about in this presentation throughout ClioCon. We have a lot in this presentation. We have, we have a few in this presentation. <laughs> Let's go back to our live demo. Awesome. And if you want, you can skip the bill approval process, especially if you're solo. Or if you're not a solo and you need to tell someone you're generating bills, you can notify members of your firm. If you never notify anyone, you can turn this off in your settings. Awesome. So let's go ahead and generate the bills. It's going to take a little bit to create a bill for all of them. But once that's done, we're going to go back to the bill section and then into the draft area. And then this will be all the bills for this month. We would have finished generating all the invoices. OK, except I need a bill. What? But we just? Yeah, I know, I know. I know it looked like I was just standing here doing nothing while you were talking. But I was actually having a conversation with attorney Patrick. He finished that Albatross contract, and he wants a bill right now. So I'm just saying. that's. OK, you know what? That's fine, because we actually have a way to do that. Yeah, so we don't have to go back to those billable clients. I'm just going to come up to the top where it says search and type in Albatross, well, the beginning of Albatross. And I'll click on that matter. And right at the top, you'll see it says quick bill. And that's exactly what it is. I just need to pull a quick, bu quick bill. So I'm going to select that. 
pretty much bypass all of this. At the bottom, you can show options, and that's exactly what Elaine just talked about with those detail levels and taxes. I'm gonna forget all of that and just hit generate bill. And that will push that into bills that are in draft, so along with the rest of them. And now we're actually done. All right, perfect. So we went through the generation bill process, and what do we want you to take away from that, from that five or 10 minutes? Um, take a moment uh, to look through the customizing and filtering options when generating bills. It's gonna save you a lot of time when you go through the bill edit and review process, which is what we're gonna cover right now. Yes, okay, review and approve. So this is the part that I talked about on the treasure map where somebody's got to look over these bills because we're not going to just assume that all of them are perfect and ready to go. So in our situation, we deal with a couple of attorneys. And when I say our situation, I mean our fake firm that we've got. <laughs> That's doing very well, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So we've got two attorneys. We've got Patrick and we've got Sandy. San Sandy is rarely in the office. She's on the go. And she likes to be notified of her bills that need reviews and approvals via email. Patrick is a little bit more old school. He's always in the office and he likes to get those bills printed, brought to him where he can mark them up with a red pen and he brings them back to me and I correct them. So in order to account for that, um, if we could switch to the live, thanks. What I'm going to do is surprise, surprise, use filters again. So I'm gonna select on filters and choose under responsible attorney, Patrick and I'm gonna hit apply. And all of these ones that are Patrick, if I select on all, it will always show you up at the top how many you actually have selected. So I've got 10 selected, and I'm going to click on the little arrow beside submit for approval, and I have a whole bunch of options there. Down at the bottom, you'll see I could print or download, and I'm going to hit print. And actually what that's going to do is download a file. But there was an option for download and print. How is, you just press print, now it's downloading. Yeah, And okay. now it just crashed. I know, I know. <laughs> just Everything went wrong after you click print. <laughs> I know, I know. Because the difference between print and download is that I had 10 bills selected, but it only downloaded one PDF. So essentially I can just go open up one PDF and it will have all 10 bills in it and I can hit file, print, bring it, Go, I was going to say, go walk over to the printer, get my bills. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I'm doing. But when I hit download, it will download 10 PDFs. That's the difference. Just different use cases. So in this case, I did walk over to the printer. I brought this big stack, well, small stack, I would say, over to Patrick. He looked them all over and said, they're good to go. Just, they're approved. Patrick, he doesn't make mistakes? Not today. So I'm going to select... Approve, but I could also hit approve and apply trust. Wait, if you click approve and apply trust, how much goes to each invoice? I don't have trust in all of my client accounts. How do I know what's going to what? Good question, Elaine. I think you would know that working in product, but... <laughs> <laughs> Throw it under the bus a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so approve and apply trust. We don't want you guys flying blind. So when you do hit that, it, is, it will lay out for you exactly what is going where. So in this case, it's saying you're about to apply a balance of 3,000 <laughs> from You'll IOLTA trust to invoice 8159. And it will detail all of the ones that have trust like that. And then I can select my operating account. So in this case, I'm actually just gonna ap approve all of these. Right there, yes, I did. And then, yep, and then we're gonna go ahead and filter for How to click Cindy. it once. I, I know. I clicked it three times. <laughs> I'm very impatient. I will click a button like four times to get it. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna filter for Sandy. And remember, she's the one who wants to be notified via email. So I'm going to, instead of clicking on any of these other options, I'm just gonna hit the big one at the top that says submit for approval. And I can type in Sandy's name here. Sounds like we're gonna lose AV for just a second. Oh, okay. That's okay. So what happens is that she would go Sammy, Sandy, and then she would click Submit. Um, but Trixie's, we already did that in the past, and we have a slide to show you what kind of email she's gonna get. So what happens here is that they'll have all the invoices that we submitted for approval just in a row right here in that email, and then it's gonna show all pending approval bills right there. 
So she doesn't get e email, she just gets the one with the list of all the bills that she needs to approve. And so what she can do now is that she can go into the pending approval section and then view the bills that she needs to edit so that she can approve them. And we'll be able to view it in HD 2019. <laughs> yeah, submit for approval. That she'll send her uh, email to whoever you send it to. You can add a message as well. So you can be like, hey, I'm billing four days late. Please get on it. OK, um, OK. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> Just please approve ASAP. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This oh, looks, technology. This looks amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the little things, you know? <laughs> okay, so pending approval is where we're at now. Yes. Yeah. So Sandy's here. It looks good. She's on her new computer. And then <laughs> she'll be able to go into any contact. Let's go into Blase Bear at the bottom right there. And she can view the invoice by either clicking that drop down and then clicking view. Or she can just click into the ID itself, and that'll take her to the invoice to save a few clicks. And then uh, Blase actually is staying in with their mom right now because they're going through a divorce, and we don't want to remind them that they're not living in their home address right now. Fortunately, we have another address on file that we added into the contact, so we're just going to select that, and that's going to change the address on the bill right away, and it's going to reflect down on the invoice itself. So we can scroll down, and then we can take a look at the invoice. And we have that address on there. And oh, it looks like we're charging $3,000 as a rate. Uh, we don't want to charge a client that much. Maybe that's how we're making so much money. Um, let's go ahead, let's edit that bill. We can remove, change that rate. And if you're not sure what a reasonable rate is and what you should be charging, we actually have a rate calculator um, application or site. Tool. Uh, tool, thank you, that's the word. <laughs> Um, on our website that you don't have to be a clear user to use, anyone can use it. Um, and all you gotta do is you put in where you're from, what if you're a lawyer or non-lawyer, and the practice area that you primarily work in, and what your current rate is. And what this tool does is it compares your rate, your practice area, your role, and your area, and compares it to those in the same practice area, same role, and same location. And what that does is it allows you to have a competitive rate while making sure that you're getting your money, your worth. We'll go back to our live demo. You're all worth three thousand an hour. You are, but we we had to compare you to lawyers in your area. We're not lawyers in your area, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna put in our rate because we know what it is. Um, and what's gonna happen here is um, anything we change here, it's gonna automatically update in the matter itself. So once we save the invoice, so things stay consistent between your bills and your matter. If you don't want that to be the case, you can just uncheck this update records button and your invoice will be separate from your bills. But we're gonna keep it checked off because we never wanna charge our clients $3,000 an hour. Uh, and that includes if you add time or add expenses. It's not included if you remove a line item because if you remove it from the bill, it still stays in the matter. It doesn't get deleted from here. And there's a lot on this page. You can change pretty much anything about the invoice, on like what shows up for the due date, the issue date. But there's a few things I want to cover. Uh, first off is the bill ID um, right here. This actually doesn't get a ton of love because it's just automatically generated. But when people first start using Clio, there's actually uh, sometimes a bit of desire to change that. Karina can speak with that. Yeah, so when I was onboarding new clients, that, by the way, before I even talk about that, that ID number shows up on the bill. It says invoice number. So chances are you don't want to send out bills to your clients that say invoice number one, two, five, ten, I don't know. <laughs> so um, there's definitely a way to change that. And actually, Elaine has some pretty good tips around it. Yeah, so how it works is that Clio just adds one to the highest number that you have. Pretty simple math. So you can change it to 8,000 like we did, and then it just goes up like there, and it seems like you've been doing this for your whole life, um, <laughs> which you have been, right? <laughs> um, and some, a tip that we used to give in support would be when people would call in in January and be like, hey, what are some tips that we can put into our account? Uh, something that we would recommend that some people liked is you can change that ID to, say, 2019-0001. And what happens is every new invoice you generate, it'll tell you exactly what year you created it, and how many invoices you create in that year. And so you can use this to keep track of your bills just by just knowing how it works. Um, and it will continue to go up. And fortunately, the years keep going up. So next year, you'll be able to change it to 2020. 
Um, and there's one other thing I want to point out on this page before we leave, and that's discounts. Uh, you can apply a discount to your invoice as a percentage, a dollar amount, through the Hill invoice, which discounts all line items on the invoice, as well as per line item. And we got some feedback on this in that when you apply a discount, people often don't want to discount the entire invoice because you paid out of pocket for your expenses and probably want all that money back. So there will be a new feature uh, being released for this where you will apply discounts only yes. to services. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, this will be checked off by default. You can still uncheck it and apply discounts the entire amount if that's what you choose. Uh, and there's no beta for this because this will be rolling out uh, shortly in the next month or so. Uh, but you should be able to see that into your account later this year. Awesome. Everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. <laughs> awesome. So let's go ahead and we'll save this invoice. And Sandy can take a look around, maybe go into another invoice, see how things are going. But we'll assume that she's done. We'll go back to the bill section and then She'll be able to go to pending approval, select all, and she can approve or um, approve and apply trust here as well. So we'll just approve them. And we can actually see here that it took Sandy a few days to get our bills together, even though we told her to hurry up because we're late. Um, so she, we can update the issue date here. It's an optional checkbox, but allows you to put in today's date, and the due date is once again calculated with the grace period so that you can give your clients up-to-date invoices. And so we'll approve them here. And then once we do that, we've basically finished generating invoices for all of October. Yeah. So we can go and await any payments, yeah, and it's it. good. So we're in awaiting payment. Does that mean that the clients have received their bill? That's right, they didn't automatically receive their bill. And that's a good thing too, because our clients are kind of split the way our attorneys are split. So we've got some clients who want to get their bills via email, and some that want to get it via mail. But before we do that, we need to make one more edit on our bills. Oh, shoot. Patrick. Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. Um, he kind of came back to us and said that there was actually a mistake on one of those bills, and now he wants to make an edit. So why this is sort of like a, oh my god, is because by default, when you first get Clio, Editing of the bills once they're in a waiting payment is off. So if I were to come in here and edit this Albatross bill, you'll notice that I can't, I actually can't change the rate. I can't remove line items, I can't add line items, I can't add a discount. But there is a way to turn that on if you have situations where you know that there will be frequent scenarios where you may have to edit a bill once it's been approved then you can do that here. Yeah, you go into billing, and then at the bottom, there's an ability for you to allow edit and approve bills and trust requests, and then that's where you can go in and make any changes that you weren't able to do when it was in draft. You'll be able to edit just if it was in draft. So are we not able to see? Go through again. Go through it again? Oh, okay. So in billing, and then billing settings right there, at the very bottom, there's allow editing of approved bills and trust requests. Yeah, it's under the heading Bill States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can turn that on to your accounts and then it'll, it'll be like that forever forth until you turn it off. Awesome, so what do we want you to take away from the bill review and um, approval process? Accommodate the different ways that your firm members work. People like to work in different ways, either on paper or remotely through a computer. Clio has ways to do that and try to be able to accommodate for your firm to make things go as fast as possible. Okay, for real now, we're going to manage our bills. <laughs> okay, so this is the part where we got our bills, now what do we do? And I want to share these out. So we're going to slip back into our live demo, and I will show you how to accommodate for those two scenarios that I talked about, where we've got some of our clients want to receive their bills via email and some via mail. And some need to receive them by mail, because they may, might not have email. They might be in immigration uh, law, or might be in elder law, where maybe they just don't have email set up. They need a way to reliably view their invoice. Yeah, choices. So again, surprise, surprise, I'm going to use filters, and I'm going to use another custom field. So in this case, this one's called billing preference. 
And the cool thing about this custom field is we actually put this in our intake form in Clio Grow. And so the client will receive this. They'll choose how they want to receive the invoice. And then that gets synced all the way here so that even though we've never talked to the client, we're able to give them that client-centric experience for them and they'll be able to get the invoice how they want. Yeah, so we've got email, mail, and leads. So I'm gonna select mail and apply those filters. I just have a handful, so same thing as what I did before, I'm just going to hit print. And I would just go get those off the printer, fold them up, stuff them in the envelope, you guys know the drill. <laughs> and then, I'm going to do the same thing all over again, but with email. So I'm gonna select these ones and hit share. So you'll notice that it says items will be shared with their respective clients. So historically with Clio, what we've done is we've had a point of contact for that matter, i.e. the client. And they would be the only ones who would receive that email for the bill on their primary contact email. But we heard some feedback. <laughs> We've heard you guys. <laughs> <laughs> that maybe you want to send it to more than the client. Maybe you, <laughs> yeah, right? maybe you want to send it to mom and dad for your client and not the eight-year-old client. Or maybe you're working with a business, you need to send it to the county department and Andrew who needs to be part of all correspondence for whatever reason. So uh, this will be an early access feature that you can sign up for if we go to our slides. <laughs> Yay! Nice, you'll be able to go into a matter, you can edit it, and then you can select the recipients from all related contacts. And then once you do that, it will allow you to automatically share them when you share your bills. And so this is an early access, you can sign up for this. Um, and then once it's ready for beta, we'll be sending out emails and reaching out to people who are interested. Uh, you can click that in the presentation, in the document, early access link, and then it's under billing enhancements. If you're ever confused about how to sign up, come by the lab, we'd be happy to help you. Yeah. Okay, so that's early access bomb drop number one. Number two, there's another thing that's coming, and that's when I click to add a message. Uh, I know from my past experience billing my clients that I would pretty much put the same-ish message. You know, I might tweak something like, happy summer, pay your bill, to happy autumn, pay your bill, kind of thing, right? But I wanted a basic email template that I didn't have to type out or copy and paste every time. It's coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's coming. coming. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the one is uh, in the preliminary stages right now. We have some concepts that we want to show you. We'd love for you to come by, take a look at them, see if they solve your problem or if you have any feedback in them. So come by in the lab and take a look at the build templates uh, concepts we have. We will be implementing this later this year or early next year. And once again, if you wanna sign up for early access to this, you can sign up in that early access document in our presentation or come by the lab, we'd be help you. All right. Okay, so we've done it. We've done it, we've shared the bills. You'll see when you share a bill via email, it gets that little green symbol beside it, just letting you know that this has in fact been shared and we are now awaiting payment. So just to review managing your bills going forward from this awaiting payment stage, you can look, in, you can drill down into all sorts of information here. So I could click on that number again to view the bill. If I click on the client name, it'll bring me to the client. Same with the matter, it'll bring me to the matter. Um, just so you know, I didn't really talk about it in draft or pending, but you can play around with these columns and turn on or off columns that you may want to see, such as paid or total. And then you can also move these columns around to just fit the way that you work. Just so you know, this is per machine. So even if you were to move this, it won't affect your boss's um, Clio at all. So they'll still, they'll still see Clio how they want to. Yeah, so per, yeah, per user, it's not gonna affect others. So now that we shared it, um, we get paid, right? Yeah, everybody pays their lawyer, right? Right on time, right on the first share. You guys always get paid right on time. No? Okay, no, I know that's not true. <laughs> so that's why we recently announced uh, the outstanding balances feature, which you might have heard from Jack's keynote or some of our earlier presentations that snuck in before us. Um, but 
We have in here a list of all your contacts that currently owe you some amount of money. And we have some information that we found from feedback to be the most important. So we have the balance on the right. Obviously, you want to know how much they owe you. And you can click into that balance, and it'll take you to the client's uh, bills page, so you can see all the bills that add up to that amount. And then we have a few columns here, last paid. And this is because from feedback, we found that in terms of a collections relationship, what uh, firms cared about most was if clients were actively trying to make a payment. Um, maybe they didn't pay off the entire invoice, but they're, they're trying. They're in a relationship, and they're in a conversation to bring that balance down. So we have that information here so that you can maintain that relationship. Be like, hey, I know you made a payment, just so you know this is the remaining amount. Or, hey, you haven't paid in a year. Can you, can you pay your bill? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and beside that, we have the newest bills due date, which tells you if you've generated any new invoices recently and the due date on it, which is what your clients are beholden to. And this allows you to know if you haven't had any new billable time for a given contact and you just have an outstanding amount that just needs to get uh, paid towards. And then you have your last year date, which allows you to just keep track of how long uh, it's been since you contacted your contact. Please know that this is last year for outstanding balance, not your bill. So if you shared your bill, it's not going to update here because there's not all the information that your client would have received in the bill share. And you can share the balance to the left right here. And there's now an option for you to show a preview email to yourself. Um, instead of having to add yourself as a contact, you'll get an exact copy of what your client will see. And it will look something like this. And so you have a list of all those invoices. Um, your client will be able to click into each invoice and download it. And they'll be able to pay off the entire amount if you have Clio payments uh, installed or installed, connected. OK. So outstanding balances, managing your bills. So key takeaways for this section is just to keep in mind that for detailed information on specific bills, you're going to be focusing on that bills page that I was on. And for, that, for a holistic view on your client's outstanding amounts, outstanding balances is your friend. Cool. So we've gone through this entire journey. We've went through the pre-billing setup, so we know what we should we need before we start billing. Uh, we went to generate bills. We showed you how to use filters and be able to customize your bills so that your next step of review and approval is easier. And then once you get to improve and <laughs> review and approve, you'll be able to customize how you send out those bills to members of your firm to have them maximize their work uh, efficiency by either sending it through pending approval or sending it as or printing it out. And then we went through the two different ways that you can manage your bills, either the bills index that gives you a very specific view or the overall holistic view and outstanding balances. And we're now at the treasure chest where you should be able to have your bills out to your clients and then you should be able to get paid. Get paid so get much, paid. get paid so much. So unfortunately we did run, like just with all the technical glitches, you know, tech is wonderful unless it's not working for you. Um, so we ha only have time for five minutes of questions. However, I will be in the smart bar this afternoon and Elaine will be at in, that product place. In the lab. <laughs> the lab. <laughs> right across got, the smart I bar. I got this. I got you get this. lost, which is just in the room beside us, um, behind all the exhibitors. Um, and there was one question in the back that we didn't get to answer before. And a mic will be walked to you so that you'll be able to ask that. It's the same question as her? No, oh, okay, we'll bring it to you next. <laughs> what my question was is after you submit bills to an attorney to approve them, is there any way to get notification that they've been approved? Right now, we just have to go to awaiting payments to see, oh, okay, they're there now, they've been approved. Mm -hmm. I would love to get a notice so that I don't have to do that for hundreds of bills. That makes sense. There's currently no way for you to be notified when something's been approved by your attorney. Um, feel free to come to my lab, love to chat with you about that, um, or a little bit more about your workflow in general. But yeah, currently there's no way for you to do that. You would just go straight into a pending approval, or a waiting payment. But we had a question here a little bit earlier. Oh, almost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll just, I'll come over. Here we go. Oh, thank you. I feel so important. <laughs> um, I have several, but I can tell that other people have them, so I'll just break it down. Um, is there a way that we can have the bills where the, the expenses are 
separated from the services? Yeah, you can. Um, you okay. can do that through the bill themes. Um, okay, don't, don't go through that. I'll find it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, I just didn't know if you could. <laughs> Next <laughs> question, <laughs> maximizing the time. Um, is there a way to set it where the early payment discount expires on the due date? I'm getting the early payment discount paid 30 days, 60 days after the 15-day payment discount deadline, oh, and I'm not, and I don't, you know, I mean, I'm a small firm, so I technically go in there and back it all out, but I've got other crap to do, so. Yeah, it should, the early payment discount should go away at due date, that's the early payment discount. If you're having issues with that, uh, book appointment with a smart bar, and they're happy to dig into that, make sure that works Okay, for you. I'll go see them, and, okay, is, never, sorry, there's okay. a few other people with Next questions, <laughs> but if you have any questions, do come by, we'll be happy to help you out. Just, and yeah, go, I can go back to this person. Yeah, you took the mic, yeah, okay. Is there a way to allocate a flat fee amongst multiple users? No, currently flat fees are uh, specific to, an, to a person when you create the uh, matter itself. So not sure. like the revenue from a matter between multiple users, yeah. you can't, okay. We have, we have some bills that need to, be, need to be approved by two different lawyers. So is there any way to set that up? Yes, because I could have actually sent that to two, but like they can both be notified. Okay. But once it's approved by one, it pushes it into a waiting payment. You're talking about one attorney be like, this is good, and then the yeah. other attorney looking at it be like, I also said it's good. Yeah, and, and it's, we, need both to, we need both to approve. Yeah, no, there's no, yeah. no current way for you to do that unless you went from draft, someone sent in a pending approval, but yeah. There's a lot of things that we could add, yeah. <laughs> is there a way to bill for expenses only? Oh, you mean if and you have time entries and expenses and an you want easy to way. be... Oh. Mm. <laughs> no, there's no way to cu currently quickly generate an invoice with expenses only. There's a few questions on this side. We have two minutes left. Just a, just a quick question. Can we do late fees by matter, not by client? Because some clients have multiple matters um, that may or may not be relevant for a late fee. Late fees as in for payment profiles and interest? Yeah, so for instance, if there is an estate matter that is agreed to be paid when it's resolved versus... Um... Uh, no, currently payment profiles are connected to the matter or contact, so any of the contacts matters would have okay. the same... Uh, hopefully profile. someone's listening. That would be great. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have a minute left. Are there any quick questions? Did you, did you have a quick question? Okay, did, oh, oh, oh. You want to just yell it? So the question is for the new billable, non billable time feature um, can it still show up on the invoice to spec uh, and show the client that this amount wasn't billed? And that's, we don't currently have any no charge items, it's non-billable, does not end up on the bill ever. But yeah, we have heard that this was something we want. We took that out so that we were able to deliver this so that you can have tracking to start off with. Go. Oh. Where's the, oh, yeah, yeah. Do you have an option where someone, let's say a new lawyer spends three hours on writing a motion and we want to knock it down to an hour and a half where the time would still be credited to the lawyer so when i look at how many hours they worked i still see the three but the client would only see the hour and a half yes, yeah when you edit a bill uh you can just uncheck update records and then you can change the hour, uh, quantity to be an hour and a half and then in the matter it would still be three so when you pull reports it would still be three um but the client would only have the one and a half on the invoice. check i'm sorry what check what box or Update records. Update records? Yeah. Perfect. When you're going, you would have to edit the bill when we were editing mm -hmm. the bill and change it to 1.5 and just click off at the top update records. Perfect. Thank you yeah. so much. Awesome. Okay. You guys were done for time. You guys have been amazing. You laughed well, at all the so right much. times. <laughs> you clapped at all the right times. Thank you.